The biggest mistake I made in my business was not hiring a professional to help me with my money. Not just my taxes, but the actual plan I had for my business. I was completely lost on how to handle taxes, what to do with profit, and how to maintain my income. I had to find a better way. That's when I found Core Financial. Core Financial is a team of tax professionals that actually care about building real relationships with their clients. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all of my tax benefits. Are you struggling with your finances? Look no further. Core Financial is a brand that is nationwide that can help you with your business. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core and they can help you too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to schedule a consultation today. Core Financial, real relationships, no surprises. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is Nick Miller. You will be joined by Mr. John Bunn here in just a few moments. But this last week we did another free workshop entitled Building Packages That Sell. We went live in our free workshops group as a celebration of the launch of our complete wedding videography course. As of today, right now, if you're listening to this um, on your favorite podcatcher, the course is no longer available. We're sorry. Maybe we'll release it again later in this year. Maybe not. We will have to see. But we covered some information, another free workshop on building packages that sell. It's really valuable information and we know that it will help you a lot. Disclaimer, some of this information might not translate over to uh, just listening to it. So you might want to hop on hop on over to our YouTube channel so that you can uh, fully see what it is that we're talking about. It's super solid. We hope that you enjoy. So let's jump into this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. Hello. Hello. How's it going? I think we're, I think we're here. Yeah. So Facebook is started doing this weird thing to me last week where every time I would post something, it would make it a for sale post. And somehow whenever I uploaded this video that we we're going to go live here, it made it a for sale post instead of I'm going live for a video post. So yeah, that's, that's crazy. Well, people are asking, I think that they're here. I'm letting new people into the group because there are some last minute people every time that want to get into the group, like, five minutes in so that's happening but nick it's monday and as a big monday. celebration for monday today is the last day you can purchase and enroll in the complete wedding videography course it is a lot a lot of you have joined so thank you for that um but we closed the cart we closed for enrollment at midnight tonight and as a celebration for all of the good things for so many of you joining, we thought we would do something crazy. And Nick had the idea to do another free workshop and to give away something really cool. So we're going to do that and walk you through a new free workshop. So Nick, I'm pumped. But before we get going in the comments, if you can hear us, if you can see us, okay, can you just comment? Let us know you're here. Let us know where you're watching from. I think Marie said she was watching from up in the air. She got online Wi-Fi on the airplane so she could watch this. That's bonus bananas. points to her. But making sure that we can, you guys can all hear us and see us. Just let us know that you can. Nick, if, I think you plugged into your good microphone this time. I did. My, my good mic is in. I'm, I'm good, I think. Good. You can let good, me know. Good. People are saying it looks good. So good. Okay. Great. Awesome. Great. So we have a free workshop today and we're going to get into it. Building packages that sell. It's something we've talked about before, but the information is so good. We got some new stuff added. We're going to cover that in a second. But before we get into that today, John, as you mentioned, our biggest, craziest giveaway that we've ever done, we are giving away a brand new M1 iMac. These fun colors and all sorts of like people that got the uh, the Mac minis with the M1 chip. They just said it it cut their 4K footage like butter. That's what I heard. So I am really excited to see what these can do for your computer, for your footage, for your editing, for all that kind of stuff. We're going to give one away. You have to be present to win. So if we call your name at the end and you're not here, sorry. And we're going to give you two opportunities to enter in your name. So you can have your name in there twice. We're going to do emails at the end, but right now, if you text IMAC to this number, 918-300-4617, text IMAC to that number, you will get a second, your name entered in a second time for the drawing for the IMAC. 
So, Nick, do, do we make them pick the yellow iMac? I mean, is that something I mean, just I'm, out, I'm, out of I'm respect? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Out of respect for the How to Film Weddings colors? I mean, no? Okay. I well. mean, they should do that. I don't know if they, they will do that. Okay. Respect. I respect yeah. that. Yeah, so definitely send a text to that number, 918-300-4617. We use an app called Community. It lets us be able to text back and forth with you. So if you have questions about the course, you can text that number. Today, we'll answer your questions. Nick and I are on there. We kind of blocked off the whole rest of our day to just be available to answer questions for you about the Complete Wedding Videography course. We want to make sure it's the right fit for people, and so many people are joining. Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about it in a little while, but text that number. And if text you texted it earlier it. today, John posted this in one of our groups earlier. If you've already texted, you are good. You don't need to do it again. Your name is in there. You just need to be present in order to win. So, yep. John, today we are talking about building packages that sell our last free workshop in the celebration as we celebrate the launch of the Complete Wedding Videography course, building packages that sell. So who we are, we, we've done this, uh, you, you probably know by now, but I am Nick, that is John. This is how we looked whenever we're both nope. wearing jean jackets. <laughs> I do like I was in the photo. Yes, this is, this is us in denim. It is us in denim. So anyway, building packages sell. We are going to just jump right into it. Some of the things that we're going to talk about today is first off, getting the right people to contact you. I know that this is a can be a big problem to people where they're getting clients um, and they might be getting weddings, but it's not necessarily those clients and those weddings that they necessarily want. So one, getting the right people to contact you. We're going to touch on um, what to include in your packages, building those packages that sell, and then we're gonna spend some time getting people to say yes. So they mm. go through our entire process. How do we get them to say yes? We are going to share some things about consultations um, that is new to this presentation. So here we go. John, has this ever happened to you where you get an email from a potential client and basically all it says is, hi, what are your prices? You ever gotten that? I, I don't think that I have. Ne that's never happened to me in the history of my 15 years doing weddings. No one has ever done that. No, I'm kidding. That is the standard question that brides, that grooms know they have to ask. They just say, hey, I'm this person. What are your packages? How much do you cost? They don't know what else to ask. And don't take it offensively when someone asks you that, but you don't want to just give them that information some of the times without knowing a little bit more. So they don't know what they don't know what else to ask. And if you don't know how to guide them, they don't like you can't help them to understand if you're the right fit for them. So you need to guide them on how questions. So yes, definitely. And one thing I want to touch on here is social media is such a big presence in our lives, in our businesses. And the ones that, you know, John and I seem to be utilizing the most our Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok right now. That's where we're, we're kind of heading in our businesses. And um, one thing that I have seen often before with both with people in our industry, both photo and video, is you go to their Instagram feed and it looks so good. Like you're like, man, this looks so curated. This looks so nice. But then you click that link to their website and the website looks totally different than the feel than the vibe that they have on their social media feeds. And so someone explained to me this uh, one time that your social media presence is kind of your curb appeal. Okay, I've said this before, but if you are um, driving through a neighborhood, you can tell a lot or assume a lot about a person based on how their yard is kept. Is are there are there is their yawn, yawn their lawn edged? You know how's it how's the grass cut? How are the how are the bushes? How are the trees? All that stuff you can tell a lot. And so what we want them to do is give that right curb appeal for our business. And that's what social media, so that we can invite them into our living room, which is inside our house, and so they can get a feel of who we are. And that's our website. And the thing that we want people to see whenever they look at that curb appeal, curb appeal of our social media accounts, and then they come into the living room, which is our website, and they get to know us more, is that they are consistent. That if you look at my Wild Oak Films Instagram feed, and then you go to our website, you can tell that these two things go together, that these two things match. And you want it to be consistent across all of those platforms. 
Yeah, that's re- that's really good. And then next up, you want to show what you want to shoot. This is going to help you get the right kinds of people it, it reaching out to you. If the curb appeal is there, if your social media matches or draws them in with a beautiful curb appeal, something that's attractive to them, and they come to your website, and then you're showing things you don't want to shoot, it doesn't help you in the process. So you want to show things you want to shoot. Nick, here on that slide, is showing an elopement in California that's really adventurous and outdoorsy and oceany. And guess what he's getting contacted to do? Not weddings that are, you know, barn weddings in the Midwest. He's getting contacted to go do these kinds of weddings because he's showing what he wants to shoot. Yeah, yeah. So getting the right people to contact you, you need to be consistent, meaning your your the look and feel from your social media platforms to your website needs to look the same to tell that it comes from the same person. Show those things that you want to shoot. Um, keep coming back to, I, I keep coming back to this thing of we keep getting these adventure, outdoorsy, awesome weddings because those are the kinds of things that we're showing on our website. Those are the things that we're, we're showing. And then another thing, John, that I think we forget is we have the power to say no to people that maybe contact us that aren't the types of weddings that we want to shoot. Why don't you talk on that for a sec? For the longest time, I wanted to be popular to everyone. I'm a people pleaser. I wanted my work to be attractive to everyone. And so what happens whenever you do that is you become vanilla. You become just kind of the same old, same old. You're, you, there's nothing that makes you stand out to someone else. And one of the ways you can really start to differentiate yourself is saying no to couples that don't fit your vibe that don't fit, you know, what you're wanting. And you can do it in a lot of different ways, differently than just saying, no, I don't want to work with you. But you can on your website or on your social media, in your captions, you can say, you might be a Wild Oak Films bride if dot, dot, dot. The outdoors speaks to you. If emotions are this to you, or if the, whatever, you might not be a Redeemed Productions or John Bunn Films bride if video isn't that important. If you're just looking to check video off your list, you can say no to them before they contact you. And we're saying to get the right people to contact you, there's some work that's involved with your curb appeal, with your website, with showing what you want to shoot, and then really communicating and driving that point home so you can make it easy for people to reach out to you. And there should be an easy way on your website. And we talk about this a lot in the course, and we do a lot of website reviews as one of our monthly live trainings where people just aren't putting calls to action on their website. They make it confusing on where to go next or how to get in touch with me. And Nick, I'll let you talk a little bit about just how you've set that up on your new website. Yeah, so whenever we had our website redesigned last year, one of the things that I talked to our designer about is we want calls to action everywhere. So every single page has a call to action. Book your wedding now, reach out to us. We have a place where they can send us an email. They can click there or they go into the top, you know, and they click contact and that takes them to our contact for where they can get a hold of us. But we wanted to make it easy. If people want to reach out to us and they want to book us, we wanted to make it so that they could reach out to us easily. So putting a call to action, I think a lot of people make the mistake of only doing that on their contact form. Okay. You need to have a place where they can reach out to you all over the place every single page, um, especially high traffic pages like your about me page or maybe on your films page and break it up and put multiple calls to actions all over the place. So that's definitely something you should consider with your website. Then on your contact form, this is just the one that we pulled from our my website, my wife and I's website, but put the name, the date, uh, venue, you know, who are you working with, planner, uh, who's the photographer, DJ or band, you know, those are big questions. And then something about the story. And, you know, make it make it be one of those things in our opinion to kind of weed people out, okay? Uh, is to make it a little more extensive. I mean, not like a ton of information, like you don't write a bunch of stuff, but have it be a little bit more than name, date, and email so that it, it we can weed people out just a little bit as they're filling out the contact form. Agreed. Okay. Good job. Good job, us. Good job, us. Good job. Are we doing a good job? Let us know in the comments. Is this helping anybody? <laughs> uh, Are we John, preaching good? Can, That's what they used to say, this. the preacher... 
the preacher at the church used to be like, shout me out if I'm preaching good. And you'd have to, you know, amen. Okay. Anyway, you don't have to say amen, but you can for bonus points. But next thing up here on the list, should you put your pricing on your website? And there is only one right answer to this question. Not really. There are lots of right answers to this question, and it depends a lot on you and your business and what you're wanting to do. Um, there's the, th the three options we have here. The full price sheet is just listed on your website. Your base price listed like Nick and I both do or no pricing at all. And Nick, I might let you talk about <clears throat> kind of some of the pros and cons to each of these. Right. So um, if you have... I'll, I'll start it at the bottom with no pricing at all. If you do not list your pricing at all and you want to get a ton of inquiries this is where this is where you go okay it is pr frustrating to brides where they have no clue what the price is to couples they, they, they don't know anything but you will get an increase in inquiries the problem with that because you have no qualifying qualifying your service of price you're going to get a lot of people that are just kicking the tires that cannot afford you no matter what your price point is and you're going to just spend a lot of time dealing with that Okay. If you have your base price listed, you will get less inquiries, but those inquiries are going to be a little bit more qualified. Okay. Because they, oh, I see that they start at $5,000. Uh, okay. You know, I can maybe swing that. So you would think so. Now people aren't very good at reading, so they might totally miss that all together and wait for you to send an email back, but it's a little more qualified. And then if you want to really, really qualify yourself um, you can list your whole pricing sheet. A couple of years ago, I actually did this where I put my entire pricing on our website. The only reason that we took it down was because we we're starting to do a lot of destination stuff and quoting with travel and all that kind of stuff. So we, we got out of that. But what I noticed was that my inquiries went way down. People weren't contacting me as much, but of the people that did contact me, my booking rates went way up because they could see and, and figure out everything that they were getting into. They knew exactly what the price could be. So they were kind of budgeting. So those, those were those three options. Um, there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer to this. It's what you want to do and what you, uh, how you want to run your business. You're going to have hear a lot of experts and a lot of people say, Oh, you should definitely not put your pricing on. You should put your pricing on. Okay. But at the end of the day, if it works for you and you're booking clients and you're, and you're happy with what you're doing, then that is, that works and that's a good way to go. John. And we have some good friends that like are also wedding filmmakers that just said, we're putting all of our price on our website because we just got married. They're a husband wife team. And we don't want, we had a hard time just getting people to tell us what their prices were. And we didn't want to mess with that, but they're in a different place in their business than others where they're really highly sought after. And so you have mm -hmm. to look at where you are in your business for me why I have my base price listed and not everything is because I feel like personally with my brand, I need to do some of the things we're going to talk about later to really connect with them, to show them the value that I can bring. My brand doesn't just stand alone with the quality of work that I have to just put the work out there and to be fully booked. It's really good work. It's really great quality. But over the 14 years of me doing this, I know that I'm able to book 20 to 30% more per mm -hmm. wedding by getting them in the door. And then from there, really explaining them the value. If I just give them everything at the beginning, they're in the driver's seat when it comes to what they think they need, what they think is important. And so it's just different for where you are in your business. If you're highly sought after, fully booked, you don't want to mess with it, put your prices out there. If you're brand new and you just need inquiries, maybe don't put any pricing at all. Or if you're kind of in the middle Maybe put your base pricing, things like that. And so this is a little bit. So in the comments, let us know. Do you put your pricing on your website? Do you put a base? Do you put the full? Let us know. Yeah. So whenever you want to get the right people to contact you, take them on a journey first and be consistent. What do we mean by that? Take them on a journey is, um, you know, have your stuff be consistent from all your platforms and so that they can see that it's, it's curated so they can see that what, what we get over here on Instagram is also what we're getting over here when we watch a full film, which is the same kind of stuff that we get whenever we head over to their website. Again, show the things that you want to shoot. Um, let's say you're shooting, uh, 10 weddings this year and only two of them are ones that you like. This is what I want to do. This is the type of work I want to do only put those two weddings on your website. Okay. You use your website for your portfolio portfolio to build your business and then make it easy for them to reach out with you, have calls to actions, 
everywhere. So that's our uh, process in thinking about getting the right people co to contact you. So building packages that sell, what should you include in your packages or your a la carte pricing? Okay. Um, as a lot of people, you know, when they get started and they're putting some stuff together, they, they include, okay, I know I need film and length and then I need some hours of coverage, but I want to have multiple packages. And so we ask the question, you need to ask the question, what is the pull through? John, why don't you tell people what a pull through is so that they can yeah. answer that question? Yeah. So when we're talking about packages and, you know, for some of us, it's just, we have one package with add-ons for this case, we're talking about um, pulling through from one option to the next, whether um, that be like, um, like a pull through might be adding something like aerial coverage to your middle package or a longer film or something that adds significant value into the couple's eyes to say, I'm willing to pay more for that package because those things are in there. Maybe it's coverage time for you. You know, you can you can talk to your your couples about what's important to them um, after the fact. What caused them to book you? You can interview past couples, but really, it's just something that's going to take them from saying, uh, "I see the main value in package one" to bumping it to package two or package three. Did I explain that okay? Yes, absolutely you did. What would you take on if you had an extra set of hands? What would you do with your free time if you didn't have to edit? So many of us get bogged down in the post-production hustle that we never seem time to focus on our business. John and I both felt that way until we found Weditor. Weditor is a post-production team of top wedding film editors and project managers that give your films and brand the extra eyes, ears, and hands that they need. Not only is Weditor delivering films we love to our couples faster, but we can invest ourselves fully in other areas of our business knowing that Weditor has our back. Be the first to know how your second shooters are doing, how those new LUTs work with your footage, and relax knowing your couples are getting the full attention they deserve on every single project. So what could you do with an extra hand? Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor, whether you're ready to start now or preparing for next season. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. If you're interested in this service, make sure you head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor soon. Fall 2020 spots are lined up and filling up fast. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. Finding the perfect song for your wedding film can be so frustrating. We spend countless hours searching for the perfect song. When it comes to licensing music, Nick and I both love Musicbed. Not only do they have the best music, but their website makes it so easy to find the perfect song and to find it fast. We've both been using the Musicbed's wedding subscription for years and cannot recommend it enough. Not only are they adding new music from incredible musicians like Chapters, The Light, The Heat, and Tony Anderson all the time, They've made it incredibly easy to search their library for mood, genre, instrumentation, and even key. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed and use promo code HTFW for a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription. howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. Um, so in building packages to sell here, we, we've done a lot of um, mentor sessions over the last few years. And in looking at people's pricing sheets and pricing stuff, we have seen some common threads uh, through lots of different pricing. And so we want to help you um, not make those same mistakes. Okay, so one of the things that we see a lot is too much is offered in their packages or the prices are just too close together. So I am going to show a, a, a pricing example and this is one that I made up. I'm not throwing anyone under the bus or anything like that. I, I made this up um, and I wanted to show you a problem in how this pricing sheet can can work out. So uh, here we have package A and you can see it's listed at $1,000 and six minute fill, 10 hours of coverage, ceremony edit, toast edit, dances. Okay. That you can all agree is a ton of stuff for that price point, okay? And then we're going to bump it up to package B. It's only $300 more. And look at this, you get an eight minute edit instead of a six, you get 12 hours instead of 10, and then you get a FOMO doc edit. Or this one, the pop package, okay? You're getting for only $500 more than the base, you're getting a 10 minute film, all day coverage, ceremony, toast, dances, FOMO doc edit, and all of the raw footage, okay? If you... If this is your package, John, which which one are people booking? 
I'm, bo- I'm booking the $1,500 one. I mean, it's everything for not much more. There's just right. too much. It's too close together. Everything's included. There's not enough separation. Yes, exactly. And so th- that's what people are going to do as we look at this one. So uh, too much is offered. The prices are just too similar. They are too close. Okay. Um, there isn't a a, a, a big pull through in either of those. So as we come here and we look like the pull through, like I'm, if I'm getting everything that I want in package a, why do I need package B or package B for 1500? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. That, uh, because you, say said, you have two C. package B's, but the package B 1500 is the one I was telling you. Right, that I right. Um, <laughs> my, my bad. Okay. But if, if you have everything that you want that's in package A, why would you want to upgrade for $500 more when absolutely everything you could want, everything that you could need is in that first package? Another thing uh, that I, I want to sh- uh, sh- talk about here is whenever it comes to a pull through, you just need to know that your couple might not value what you value. Okay. Um, you have all this experience. Um, we did a very um, scientific poll on our Instagram a couple of years ago, and uh, we probably got 50, 75 responses somewhere in there. And we asked the question, what would you rather have more coverage on your wedding day or longer film? All right. For it was overwhelmingly people said they want more coverage on their wedding day. People that had not yet been married, they were engaged that hadn't been married. They were looking or waiting for their wedding day. People that had been married or other wedding vendors, they said longer film. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just where I would probably um, value a longer film. Someone who's just excited about it. They just want to make sure that their entire day is captured. Okay. So just, just things to be mindful of as you are building your packages is that your couples might not value what you value, but that's the importance of talking to them. John, why don't you talk about this next one? Yeah. A lot of times too, in our mentor sessions or when doing pricing reviews, we see too much jump between packages or the jump doesn't really make sense. And as we're talking about building packages that sell, you have to be really careful about how you structure these. We'll see something like this a lot where package A is $1,000 like we talked about. Um, Package B might be $3,000, which is a pretty good jump. But then package C is crazy different price, $8,500. And it doesn't make sense. It's confusing. So you have to make sure to really think through um, and make sure that the a la carte prices support your actual package prices. And what we mean by that, a la carte items, just basically standalone, an hour of coverage equals this much money. Standalone, a ceremony edit equals this much money. And kind of laying those things out so when you build these packages, it's a better value to buy to actually get the package as well as you can show it easily to your couples to say, look here on package B. If we add all of these things up a la carte, That's a $5,000 package. So on package B for $3,000, this is starting to make sense. And then it makes it a lot easier for them to see the perceived value. Yeah, yeah. Those a la carte pricing should support the package pricing. So um, some things to think about whenever you are uh, sharing this information with your couples, okay, sharing your pricing, is that your presentation matters, what it looks like, how you communicate, all of that stuff really matters. Um, In our Complete Wedding Video group, we actually asked people to share their pricing sheets so that we could just find some stuff. And here is one, uh, someone that shared theirs with us, and they just are, it's a breakdown of the cost, what's included, and the look. And if you look at this, this looks very well made. This looks very professional. This looks like, when it, what what is that price? It's really small. It's like 5,500 for that top package. Like just by looking at this, I was like, okay, this looks like a website that can charge $5,500 for a wedding based on how this look because your presentation, how you share the information really matters. Another thing you need to do whenever it comes to your pricing sheets how it's all laid out is make it really easy to read. Okay. This is one that we got that, um, the setup isn't bad, but we just thought, thought that this dark background, this dark blue with this gold text was a little difficult to read in situations. 
sometimes we will, and I know like HoneyBook or different companies have pricing sheets that you can buy, like you can, you know, use or things like that that's built in. Presentation matters so much and it should be a continuation of your brand. And that is so, so important to not Mm -hmm. have a disconnect with your brand whenever it gets to the most important part, which is the presentation of the collections you offer, the way you use words. It's so much different. It just like little things like instead of calling them your packages to calling them your collections or just thinking about words and thinking through things on that presentation and extending and knowing your brand and seeing that brand within these packages it or collections, whichever you want to call them. But that is really, really important. I want to make sure that that is driven home on a lot of people have a black and white pricing sheet that they made on Microsoft Word and it's awful and it's not doing you any justice. So definitely take the time mm-hmm. and make sure you're taking and making pricing pages that are good presentations. Next is not including too much. I've seen this so many times where people in their packages will be like 4K footage shot on the Canon C70 in 24 frames and up to 60 frames per second a Mavic 2 Pro drone shooting at 4K raw, like like all of this, so much detail, way too much detail. You want the couple to be able to have enough information to know the details. And if they have a question about which camera it is, you should be able to tell them about it. I think about like the fine dining restaurants that I've been to, and it doesn't say every single detail about the meal, but the waiter knows everything and more to make it really, really stand out to you of something you might want. You know, it might say eight ounce filet mignon. That's all it says. But then you say, tell me about this filet. And he's like, oh, it's been aged this long. We do this. We smoke it. We do. And then you can give them the details. You want to leave them a little bit more to have questions a little bit so you can interact with them. So don't include too much. Nick, what do you want to add? Yeah. And another thing I want to add with with that absolutely 100% to what John said, I, I remember the first pricing sheet that I, I uh, sent him, he was like, keep it simple, stupid, like keep it short, keep it to the point. Don't, don't put too much on there. And while this one on the left, while the packages and all that stuff, it's arranged fine. And you know, it's kind of listed out. There's, it's so text heavy and it kind of, when you're looking at it, you're kind of tune it out because it's just so much where this one on the right, where you have uh, these nice pictures. And when you scroll over them, the package, what's included then pops up. So don't include too much with just listing like all the equipment that you use or list line item, everything, but also how it's formatted and how it's put together so that it's just not super overwhelming. That's what we mean by not including too much and also include your personality. It people want to buy from people. Okay. They don't want to buy from faceless corporations. Okay. So whenever you're pricing, when you put your pricing info out there, when it put yourself on it, here's a couple of examples where the one on the left, it's just bullet point listed, very black and white, very masculine. You know, this is what you get. Here it is. And there's, again, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you put your face on your pricing sheet, people like, Oh, that's who I'll be working with. That's who I'm going to buy from. I think they are more, they're getting a little bit more invested. Okay. than they would with just seeing a a sheet that has just text and information on it. And it's all about the experience that you are continuing from the curb appeal all the way through to the actual sending them of the pricing, giving them that experience And you have to put yourself in the shoes of your couple, whether it's a bride, whether it's Mm -hmm. a groom, whether it's the parents, whomever it is, you want to make it easy for them to understand what it is that you're offering. And you also want to make sure that you're not confusing them and you're showing them who you are and what you stand for. And you should be repelling people that don't want to work with someone like you. And that's okay. You don't need to impress everyone. Last time I checked, I only like the most I've ever heard anyone shooting is a volume brand of like two or 300 weddings a year. And still it's like, there's tens of thousands of weddings every year in my city. There's, there's plenty of work to go around. So really lean in Mm -hmm. to the experience you're giving them. Nick, I'll let you talk here about this example. package. So, so as we, as we talk about, you know, the pricing and, um, 
not including too much and having the everything laid out. Like this is just an example package that I put together. So package A at $1,500. And all that's included in that is a five minute film and six hours of coverage. Then you go into package B and you can see for double the price, you get that six minute film. So it's a little longer, but you also get eight hours of coverage, which most of you know, that's a full wedding day. You get ceremony edit, toast edit, and an Instagram teaser. And as we're talking about pull through, this is the pull through. Okay. You want package B. You want your middle package. If you have a package system to be your most booked package, if your top package or your bottom package is your most booked, then your bottom package is too low and you're including too much stuff in it. Same thing for the top one. The price is too low or you're including too much stuff with it. So Figure out what is the bare minimum just to get the foot in the door. When you say, I start at 1500 that can get people their foot in the door, even though they don't want that $1,500 package, then they do that. They want the $3,000 package. And then for package C, which is $1,500 more, longer film, more hours of coverage, uh, ceremony, toast, FOMO doc edits, Instagram teaser. And then as we talk about the uh, a la carte stuff, you want that to um, reflect the pricing of your your pricing. So if you go in and you add up this stuff a la carte wise, then it's more expensive if you do everything a la carte, okay? So, um, so that way, when you look at package B and you add all that stuff up at the bottom, you know, it's actually a better deal for you to get package B than it would be to try and do it a la carte. John, what do you have to add to this? I think that's all very good. I saw Courtney said, be right back. I'm going to redo my pricing guide. It's it, it, like after doing this for so long, you know, and, and answering the same questions again from couples. And that's a thing like when you're talking with your couples, they're like, I don't understand this. What does this mean? That's somewhere that you need to look at and like, oh, how can I fine tune this and make this better? And so um, the way that you put these packages together is different for every single person. So there's not like an exact science. I want to go for more of a luxury brand and a luxury vibe. And so for me, I'm setting up my packages in a different way or if you're brand new. So you just have to be looking at your prices. And then another thing is like connecting with the community and saying, hey, can someone look at my pricing? What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And that's why we love like the complete wedding videography community, our main how to film weddings community, because that is going to help you a ton. Yeah. And, uh, this is, this is a, uh, a package example from one of our, uh, complete wedding video students, Jeremy, I believe. And, um, look at how this one laid out. It's very nice. It's simple. It's clean. And <clears throat> you'll notice that that middle one is a different color. That's intentional. Okay. He wants people to book that middle package for that price. Okay. Uh, and so he just the layout there and all that. There is a reason whenever you go to Starbucks that 90% of people order a grande. It's just how they have it priced, how they have it structured. It, it, you get the most bang for your buck with that medium drink. And so whenever you putting something together like this, it's drawing people into that subtly. Okay. Uh, last year we did something in our business that has totally, um, I don't know, has really changed and has really helped us a lot. And that's, we had a designer professionally put together a pricing PDF for us as we raise our prices. I learned and I figured out that just sending the honey book brochure where they can pick and choose the items that they want doesn't fit with a client where I'm charging them five, six, $7,000. Okay. You need something more custom. You need something that looks better. You need something that looks nicer. Okay. So our designer actually put this together. And since, uh, she has made this for us, um, our average booking is probably at least 6,000. Um, I think the last time I looked at my average booking for 2021, it was around 6,600. Um, I have booked a twelve and a half thousand dollar wedding. Just uh, last Friday, I booked a ten thousand dollar wedding, and so I, I this is one of the things that just contributes to that, right? It's not which which is more important or which isn't more important, but I think that this is definitely a uh, a big important part of the whole process. And so, just what our pricing? Yes, John, what do you have? So I just wanted to add this. When I met you, you were charging 
three thousand or so mm-hmm. dollars for your wedding films. And as you slowly grew, and you know, you did change your packages and got them more organized. And we worked and we talked. And then now that you're serving, like serving this these couples that are pump, bumping up over like the ten thousand dollar range, your work and everything that you're presenting to them has to align with that. And so. This is a constant change and a constant process as you're raising your prices and finding that ideal client. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, just to walk you through a little bit of this, and this is one that we have paid for, and so um, I'm, I'm not going to leave it up on, on screen a ton, but uh, so here, here's the cover of it. Um, you know, just a little bit about Jen and I, who we are, what we do, and then there's a, a hyperlink at the bottom where they can go to our website and read more about us. Uh, this is some core values of our, our business, Wild Oak Films. Then we just have some nice in- imagery with a brand statement. Uh, then we get started to get into our packages, our collection. This is our all-inclusive one. This is everything that we offer. Then the next page, it's package number two. This is uh, the build your own. And I stole this from John, but it's right. It, it's good. You know, I said it when my daughter gets married, you know, I will be absolutely happy it, with this package. It's everything I could want. Six, six minute film, eight hours of coverage, ceremony edit, and then the a la carte stuff at the bottom. Uh, some more imagery that's really nice. Uh, what's next? So I, I, I laid out something for them to, here is how you book. This is what you need to do. This is the process. This is the steps, gives them something to do. Uh, then I do some FAQ, some frequently asked questions. And then at the end of that, I go in and say, thank you so much for going through this guide, all of that sort of stuff, here is a link to our email, our website, our social so that you can follow us. So this is what we have done. And one of the things that I really like about it is every time I send that to a couple, they're like, man, you guys are professionals. Like you guys know what you're doing. This looks amazing, you know? And we're like, yeah, we are professionals. And that's the what we want to present to our couples. Like that's what we want to let them know that we know what we're doing and they, they're they valuable to us by how we present ourselves. Um, what I keep seeing with your brand is that it is an extension from the very beginning all the way through the delivery of the film. And it is very consistent. It is very well thought through. The experience from beginning to end with our couples, we want it to be streamlined and easy and on brand. And that is exactly what you've done with these packages. And it just makes them feel comfortable whenever you have this entire brand. It makes there's a a, like a, well, they're the professionals. This is, there's no like red flags. It's, it's very comfortable for them to keep saying yes to you. And so next on the list is getting them to say yes. And if you're out there, who wants to get more couples to say yes to you? If so, in the comments, say yes with an exclamation point. <laughs> I'm let, waiting for them to say it. No, I'm just okay, kidding. Okay, I'll let you, I'll let you talk. I feel like I've been talking for a while. So I'll let you yeah. take over for a minute. Yeah, so getting people to say yes, you definitely want to have enough info like we talked about on the contact form to weed people out. You don't just want it to be name and wedding date. You might want to have them answer a couple of questions like we talked about, ask them a few things about their story. Those kinds of things are going to help weed out. And also your pricing, if you're, if you, you know, like your starting price is here, or you might not be a good fit of this, that's the kind of stuff you want to make sure you have on your contact form. So you weed people out and then you want to respond as quickly as possible. I got contacted about a second wedding uh, in Italy, my like to go back to Italy. I did a wedding out there and um, the other day I got a message and within 10 minutes I responded via text because that's what she said on her form. And we have a meeting today at six o'clock to talk about me doing a destination wedding in Italy because I was quick to respond. And then you can do things like if, if you're texting or emailing, just asking simple questions like, is this your venue? Or let me double check that that's the correct date. It's an easy way to start a text conversation. Something like, hey, this is John from John Bun Films. I just wanted to check in, make sure that this, you know, I got your inquiry form. It looks like May 5th at the country club here in town. Is that correct? And they will respond easier than if you, you send them a huge paragraph here, do all these things, make it easy and conversational. And then Nick, if they say, can I see you, your pricing? <laughs> That's a fun part. You have to establish yourself as a guide. And this is going to be 
what what separates you from a lot of different companies is if you establish yourself as a guide in helping them, you're going to be able to get them away from just asking those kinds of questions. And more on that in just a second. Um, you want to add scarcity when you're having people reach out to you. We're only taking X amount of weddings this year. So even though your day might be available, uh, I might be booked because I'm only allowing myself this many commissions a year or man, we have this many weddings in that month already, or we're about like just there's different ways to do it, but adding scarcity, even like, so 2022, I only have one wedding booked right now. And that's on purpose because I'm raised, I've raised my prices a ton. But when people contact me, I tell them I'm only taking five weddings and I'm already booked on one. So I have four spots left and it just adds scarcity and then also makes them realize, oh, well, this this person is really good at what they do. They're getting booked up. So, Nick, number one, you want to get the right people to contact you. Number two, you have to know what to include in your packages. And then number three, you have to get them to say yes. And to do that, some new stuff we wanted to go through on consultations. If you want to hear some new stuff, if you do, let us know in the comments. Say, I want that. Nick, consultations are so very important. And we were talking earlier about people just saying, I want your pricing. And if you're not turning, you know, taking them from a transactional experience into an emotional one, then they're only going to know black and white numbers spreadsheets. They, they've they been given a budget by their parents maybe or their fiance or they know how much their numbers are and they're just like... Uh, this is, I, I just need to gather information. And if you just want to be something that doesn't stand out and just kind of fits in with the crowd, just give them your pricing. But if you can take them away from transactional questions into emotional questions, then you can really sell mm -hmm. them on weddings. And just as a disclaimer, that does not mean that you need to be a creep or a scam artist. You don't want to like just get them all emotional just so you can sell them something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about changing their mindset from, I just need to get data from you. Most couples are just trying to see numbers, but you need to educate them to see value first in what you do. How many of you all out there think that wedding video is the top priority outside of getting married? If, if that's, you know, for a bride and for a groom, what's the top priority for them? Like what should be the top priority for them? Wedding video, their dress, their cake, for me, I believe that wedding videography is the most important thing outside of them actually getting married and being with their family because of the fact that we can do all these things that we all know where we capture movement and capture sound. But most couples are just trying to see numbers. And if you educate them to see the value in what you do first, then you're going to be able to get them mm -hmm. to say, yes, if you've done all these building of the packages correct, if you've done all this that we've talked about, you get yourself into a consultation you don't just want to be asking transactional questions. So the next thing, Nick, is you want to stop asking transactional questions and start asking relational ones. What do I mean by this? You don't just want to say, what's your budget? Or how many shooters do you want? Or how much time do you need? Those are questions that are black and white, transactional. You want to ask relational questions. Who's your maid of honor? Why? Why'd you pick them? If we could only film three moments on your wedding day, what would they be and why? Mm -hmm. Is video going to be something you show your kids one day? What do you want them to see in the film? These are relational questions that get them flipped on their when it comes to, I was just calling to see about a price, but now I'm realizing, holy crap, video is really important. And this guy, this girl knows their stuff. And if you're using relation with them, relational questions, you can actually really connect with them and see if you're the right fit. I talked a while. You did talk a while, okay? Um, reiterating that videography, wedding videography, wedding filmmaking is not a transactional purchase. Uh, guide potential clients by asking them questions that lead to the emotion of the day. Then show them how you can capture it for them. Um, you know, uh, you know. I, I asked that three questions time every time I talk to a couple. And the one that I talked to last week, she talked about how the toast that her dad is going to give. Like she is so excited. Like with, when a heart beats, she answered that one. The other one she kind of thought about, but that one is something that she's been thinking about for a while. And so as I was talking about, you know, we create the, these films that aren't cookie cutter. You know, I can 
can just see you guys sitting on your couch and you watching this video and you hear your dad's voice and making some joke about your groom and how he's begrudgingly giving him over, giving you over, but he's so glad that you're well taken care of. You know, you say stuff like that and then that gets in their head and then they're like, I have to have Nick and Jen film my wedding. I have to have John film my wedding because you're talking about those things. And once you have that mind shift, mindset shift to focus on the relational side of wedding, the couple will see great value in what you do. Quit just talking about money. I, I charge this much. This is what you'll get. When you start getting some of those emotional responses, then big things can happen. I want to point out Amber's question. She had a comment. She said she's married. She did purchase video and loves it, but still believes photo will always feel higher priority to everyone first. And I can attest to the fact that photo is looked at as the priority, the majority of the time. But what has happened with me and my brand over the last several years of putting a priority on video as the most important thing is that the couples that book me look at video as a higher priority than photo. And that is the, the client that I want. That's the dream client where they say, no, we want to make sure video is taken care of first. We're going to pay more. And every wedding that I'm at, I'm getting paid as much, if not more than the photographer. And I'm showing the couple why video is so important. And it's not just like this game against like who's more important, but when it comes down to it, video people seem to sit in the background a lot to the photographer and don't show them the priority. They don't take the time like we talked about in the, the storytelling uh, workshops, like to get to know the couples and to stand up and, and make sure that they get good video and get good audio. If you do this kind of thing, maybe you won't be looked at as the number one priority to other vendors, but most of your couples will look at video as the highest priority if you're able to connect with them on a relational level like this. And what happens when you do that is you can anchor them with, well, how much are you spending, you know, like on the wedding itself, you should spend somewhere around this much then on the video because it's the top priority and helping them see what their priority is, mm -hmm. helps them to spend more money with you, which means that you're building packages that sell. So there you have it. That was our last free workshop that we did, Building Packages That Sell. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast this week. If you haven't yet, join our Facebook group. All you need to do is go into Facebook and search for the How to Film Weddings group. Uh, join us there, engage in the conversation, get to know some other wedding filmmakers, build up our industry. We want to rise, rise the tide. We want to uh, make wedding filmmakers more profitable and better in their business. That is the whole goal of How to Film Weddings. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, we will see ya. Are you looking for a better way to deliver your wedding films to your couples? Look no further. Our friends over at Wedflow provide the most flexible video delivery solution on the market. Wedflow is pay per project with no large upfront cost or commitment, and you can cancel any time. Not only that, Wedflow offers a premium viewing experience for your couples. Accessible on mobile, tablet, desktop, as well as their very own suite of TV apps. Each project comes with 10 years hosting and an experience for your clients that will blow them away. Stop delivering your films the old fashioned way and give your couples something to rave about. Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedflow to check out Wedflow today.